But when we convert tryptophan to serotonin in the body, and this is one reason why we try to downregulate the amount of muscle meats people are taking in because they're high in tryptophan versus broth or gelatin, which is not. Or we try to eliminate people taking melatonin, tryptophan, 5-HTP, all these supplements which are anti-metabolic and highly inflammatory. First, we have to understand that over 95% of the uh, serotonin in the body is actually produced in the enterochromaffin cells, the EC cells in the gut. And this was actually proven by Dr. Bayless, Starling, and Dr. Gershon. The problem is everyone thinks it's in the brain. Oh, less than 5% is actually in the brain. It's been shown that it's part of our second brain. It actually is there for a couple reasons. It's there to help with peristalsis because when food hits these EC cells, it releases this 5-HTP to help with peristalsis, and it helps to get toxins out of the GI system. But at the same time, it goes from the gut to the brain to tell the brain what's going on in the gut, but doesn't go from the brain to the gut. So it's a communication relay center. The problem is, if we're eating these foods or taking these supplements and we're converting tryptophan into serotonin, Serotonin inhibits oxidative energy production. It's actually anti-metabolic at the cell level. Um, sorry, I lost my place here. It actually synergizes with estrogen in the body. Estrogen wastes glucose. So now we're going to be, you know, depleted of glycogen. We're not going to be able to use our reserves to regulate blood sugar, which is going to perpetuate that vicious cycle of being hyperadrenaline and hypercortisol. It can cause leakiness and inflammation in the gut. And this is why when a lot of people get diarrhea, this is actually excess serotonin production. So if we get excess stress of any kind, we get excess cortisol production, we get the absorption of these different toxins like endotoxin and serotonin, which can cause the fermentation, putrefication, and acidification of foods. We're not able to break them down because now we get a down regulation of a lot of these enzymes. They feed a lot of the bacteria in the gut. They give off nitrogenous compounds. They overload the liver, huge burden, overload on the kidneys, huge burden, could cause GI inflammation, things like anxiety, emotional, emotional issues, irritability, food in the stool, a million and one things, a million and one things. Now going to estrogen and talking about estrogen, the interesting thing is, and we wrote a blog on this, it's not a female hormone. Men have it too. It's just a hormone. So we have to look at that and say, well, if someone's saying it's a female hormone, how do they truly understand the body? Because men have it too. It's not a female hormone. It's part of your body and you need it, but things need to be in balance with it, like progesterone. It's not that estrogen is bad. It's the balance or the ratio of estrogen to progesterone that's the most important thing to look at. Now, your liver needs anti-inflammatory proteins like broth, gelatin, whitefish, shellfish, eggs, dairy to actually detoxify estrogen. But if we're in a hypometabolic state, we're not breaking down food, estrogen is actually going to accumulate. And according to Ray P, estrogen dominance is actually one of the hallmark signs of being hypothyroid. Anytime insulin goes up and you're not regulating your blood sugar, poof is actually hyperstimulate the beta cells of the pancreas, causing excess insulin production, which can increase estrogen production. Hans Celia showed that estrogen not only wastes B6 and wastes glucose, which will cause more of a dysfunction on the cellular level, which will cause more GI issues. But estrogen actually mimics the, the first phase of the stress reaction, which will actually increase cortisol production, interfering with cellular energy production at the cell level, because it's going to affect T4 to T3 conversion. It's going to affect how our cells use glucose. It's going to inhibit oxida um, glucose oxidation. It's going to um, <laughs> inhibit how our cells use oxygen at the cell level which, according to the work of Otto Warburg and Ray P, is a hallmark sign of why, um, what are cancer cells. It's going to increase the conversion of T4 to reverse T3. It's going to deplete liver glycogen and perpetuate the hyperadrenaline hypocortisol reaction and increase the release of free fatty acids. And we go over those, that in the metabolic blueprint, how free fatty acids, according to the work of P.J. Randall, is actually the cause of diabetes. Now, moving right along to endotoxin, Endotoxin is something in the gut that builds up. Now, we're always kind of releasing toxins in the gut or in the large intestine more specifically, and we, we have a huge part of our program in the GI lesson on, on endotoxin or lipopolysaccharide, what they are and what they do in a normal state and what they do when we actually get an overburden of these. The problem is when endotoxin builds up, it's going to affect overall energy production in the body down to the cell level. Now, if you want to quote Ray P, I think this was what from his inflammation um, newsletter. 
Uh, I cut it and pasted it. I can't remember where I got it, but it's from one of his newsletters. Aging and stress increase some of the inflammatory mediators, tending to reduce the barrier function of the bar bowel, what people call leaky gut syndrome, letting larger amounts of bacterial toxins enter the bloodstream, interfering with energy metabolism, creating inflammatory vicious circles of increasing leakiness and inflammation. Now, endotoxin, or these bacteria, enhance permeability in the gut. They can easily lead to leaky gut syndrome, but like we said, it's a metabolic issue causing a gut issue, causing the increase or the decreased, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, decreased uh, elimination of these toxins, leading to increased absorption that is perpetuating the cycle, leading to increased permeability. It can easily overload the gut, overload the gut, I'm sorry, overload the liver, you're going to increase estrogen absorption, and you're going to increase the amount of toxins or endotoxin going into the blood. So this is a huge inflammatory marker in stress. And the bottom line is it suppresses, so it keeps the cycle going and suppresses how your mitochondria produce energy. It suppresses mitochondrial energy production, and at the same time, it actually it's very pro-oxidative, so it drains a lot of the antioxidants in your body, in the liver, in phase two detoxification that you need to actually fight other stressors. So it's important to understand all these things. I could keep going. It's important to understand all these things. It's important to understand our system, what they do, and what affects the systems in the body. It's not always cut and dry, but we fully believe that you can support these systems with the right foods, the right qualities, the right grams, and the right ratios to meet your needs on a daily basis. You need to fine tune. That we can figure this out by using body temperature and pulse. We can use certain foods like carrots and bamboo shoots to absorb endotoxin and estrogen over time. We can use foods with vitamin A because they're anti-estrogenic, they feed progesterone, and it's a huge part of energy metabolism. We can use these things in food to regulate or upregulate cellular energy production, the conversion of cholesterol into steroidal hormones by upregulating thyroid hormone production. And we can use foods to suppress the release of free fatty acids through regulating blood sugar, upregulate CO2 production, and upregulate overall energy production so you feel better over time. So hopefully you enjoyed this three-part or two-part, whatever I'm going to make it, YouTube series. If you want to learn more information, check the link below the Metabolic Blueprint. Give us a call if you've got questions. Hopefully we see you in the program. I'm out of here.